Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's time for our first guest. Now, she is the creator of the Climb On Foundation, and she was just recently featured in the story behind her success podcast with Candy O. Terry on January 3rd. Here's your book. It's called New Altitude. Let's hear it for Wendy Booker! <laughs> Wendy, thanks for coming out here. Hey, thanks for having me. And being a part of our show. Uh, you have a fantastic story, and it's really uh, amazing what you've done. Uh, I wanted to first uh, tell the audience that at the age of 43, you found out you had uh, MS. Right. And that's uh, multiple uh, sclerosis. And I just kind of, you know, a lot of people hear that. They know what it is. Some people don't. So why don't you uh, give them a little uh, history there of what multiple sclerosis is. Yeah. Uh, MS is an autoimmune disease. It is, uh, affects everybody differently. It's very unpredictable. And it affects the central nervous system by breaking down the myelin, which is the insulation around our central nervous system. And so messages don't get delivered from the brain as well as they should. That's putting it very elementary, but a good definition. Well, uh, now, when you had found out that you had this, it, it changed your life. Um, you, you were as you can say, relaxing at home. Uh, <laughs> you, you had three boys. Yeah. Um, uh, you weren't a very physical, active person. Nope. Uh, in fact, I think uh, I, I heard you, you were running at the time when you had found out that you had MS. And, uh, and it kind of hit you in a way where uh, you decided to try to do some new things. Why? To see how far and how hard I could push back at my diagnosis. That was my main reason. I didn't, like most of us, when you hear the words multiple sclerosis, either you think you're one of Jerry Lewis's kids, which we all have that similar, like, uh-oh, this is bad. Then when you realize, no, that's a different illness, you immediately think disability, which most of us do. They, somebody you know in your past who doesn't look very good. Mm -hmm. All of us have that. It stops you in your tracks and it takes your breath away. But somehow I knew there was more to it. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to push back. And so I got busy. Yeah, and, and you did things like run the Boston Marathon. How about yeah. this? Hey. Uh, and, and you ended up climbing mountains. I mean, some of the things you've done are, are fantastic. But I, I want to mention this, too, because at the time when you got MS, uh, there were some new uh, medication that came out for this for this uh, disease. And MS therapies is what yep. they call it. But uh, this uh, uh, helped you a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot of luck on my side. Mm -hmm. Prior to 1993, there was nothing for multiple sclerosis. It was called uh, diagnose and adios. Mm -hmm. How scary is that? You were pretty much told to go home and prepare for whatever happens. I got the disease just as these new therapies came out. Mm -hmm. They are not a cure, but they keep you longer in remission, which mm -hmm. is what you want. Yep. And that's when I said, well, let's just see how different this is now that I with MS. And, and the face of MS has changed, and I want to be that face to mm -hmm. say to people, you've got it, get on a therapy and go on living your life. How about that? Everybody? <laughs> well, we're going to take a break, but uh, before we do, I want to talk about this six of seven summits, which are the, the largest uh, mountains in the world that you climbed. How did you get to being someone who just ran a little bit to climbing mountains? Uh, serendipity. I define myself by three S's, self-discovery, stubbornness, and a whole lot of serendipity. And mm -hmm. so that's the good stuff that comes along. I heard about a team of people with multiple sclerosis who were going to go climb Denali. Mm -hmm. When I heard Denali, I thought it sounded hot and tropical. <laughs> mm -hmm. I only have climbed Monadnock and Chikorua, and I said, oh, I'm a climber. Little did I know it's one of the highest mountains in the world. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to get chosen to be on that, probably because with MS, there weren't a lot of people doing things, so by merit of running that Boston Marathon, mm -hmm. they knew that I was physically crazy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was asked to be on this team. Now, we didn't summit the first time. Mm -hmm. It was six men and myself. We all had multiple sclerosis, and the weather turned us back. But that, for me, was a very defining moment. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, I got to go back. It took me two years to train to get on that mountain. And so uh, in 2004, became the first person with MS to summit McKinley or Denali, same mountain. Oh, about that. Yeah. 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 And, and what did your three boys think about this? <laughs> That's the number one question I get asked. What did my kids think? They're not very verbal about it. 
So it's usually through their friends that I would hear, oh, you're the woman who climbed MS, or Alex told us all about you uh, climbed all these mountains. So I knew they talked about it, but you know, when they're with their parents, it's like no big deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. Uh, what we're going to have some more to talk about with you, including the, the seventh summit. I wanted to talk to you about that interesting story. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with more from Wendy Booker. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Wendy Booker, and she's the founder of Climb On. That's a foundation you created. Why don't we tell everybody what Climb On's all about? Well, the last thing you hear when you're a climber, when all systems are go and everything looks ready, is Climb On. That's mm -hmm. how you communicate to the next person on the team. So I named my foundation Climb On to help the newly diagnosed learn everything they can about multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. I've gone broader than that. I do a lot of mentoring and I work, um, volunteer at the Donald McKay School in East Boston mm -hmm. with the fourth grade class of Mr. Clear and I've been there since 2006 teaching those kids how to climb on. Oh, how about and that? And one of my former kids is now a senior at the Boston Arts Academy and she's here in our audience tonight. Mm -hmm. And she is going to be giving a program called Music Speaks with people with MS on Friday. Well, fantastic. Yeah. How about so, I know she's she's hiding in the back. I told her to sit in the front, Iris, but she she decided that I I was probably a scary looking guy. She didn't want to be up here. Uh, you were actually on television, uh, national television, before uh, Craig Ferguson's show, and uh, I know that you did some funny stuff for him. But just just being on a late night show like that, uh, you know, how, how was that compared to coming down and slumming with us? That's frightening. <laughs> It's a lot of fun, but it is very scary. I yeah. found it frightening. It's, it, it was not good. <laughs> Why was it so frightening? Partly because you're in this building where they're filming all these shows that you know about, like who's got talent and everything going on yeah, there. Yeah. He has guests like uh, Morgan Friedman is standing right there waiting yeah. to go on. Martha Stewart was making an omelet, and I'm like, wow, this is really <laughs> so. Well, after you were on the show, you did, you did write this book, uh, New Altitude. So uh, I know that you didn't actually come on the show tonight to promote your book, but I, <laughs> we found out you had one. We're like, we have to show the book. Yeah. So what, what's New Altitude all about? That's the, really the story of my journey of, and how it could be anybody's journey. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky, and um, I, I made that proverbial lemonade of lemons mm -hmm. and I committed myself to climbing the highest mountains in the world with and for MS to show what people with MS are capable of yep. to also say that sometimes we don't always make it to the top that we have to take a little longer try a little harder and dig a little deeper everybody with MS has a mountain mm -hmm. the mountain is multiple sclerosis what are they gonna do about it they can go around it they can go through it they can get to the top Maybe their mountain's going from their sofa to their mailbox and it's using their walker instead of a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Maybe it takes them 10 times. You know what, it doesn't matter. They're already a winner by virtue that they tried. Right. And so that's what my whole mountains are about, that you just gotta go out and live your life despite the illness. Take the tools available to you, get to a doctor, get on one of these therapies and go on living. Yeah, how about that? So. <laughs> now, I, I, I wanted to mention the, the seventh summit, which was yes. Mount Everest. <laughs> You, you tried twice, twice. And, but didn't make it to the top. What happened? Oh, multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. But boy, that was my Achilles. I tried it twice and I so desperately wanted to get to the top. I made it within 6,000 feet, got mm -hmm. to about between 23 and 24,000 feet. You're on that mountain for almost two and a half months. And it was determined because my MS got so bad I couldn't go on. I would have been a danger to myself and to the people I was climbing with would have been a huge liability. Mm -hmm. And so I recognized that this was foolhardy and we all wanted to come back to our families. So I did turn back. And the belief being that it was too long to be exposed to the lack of oxygen with the disease of the central nervous system. Right. Came back very dejected though. Mm -hmm. Here had been my mission. I wanted to be the first person with MS to do the seven summits. I talk about it. I work as a motivational speaker. And all of a sudden I felt like I was a failure and the MS took it away. Mm -hmm. And I realized that's what MS does. It takes away our goals, our dreams, our joy. And I thought, I can't let it. I gotta keep pushing with my mission. So after feeling kind of sorry for myself for about three months, I started thinking, well, what is Everest? It's the top of the world, but it's not the only top. And so in 2011, I took a dog sled team and was the first person with MS to stand on the North Pole, mm -hmm. the true top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so. What turned out to be amazing is that failure of not making Everest was the best thing that ever happened. Because to be true to my mission, I didn't give up on my goal, I just changed how I got there. Mm -hmm. And so everybody should be able to say, okay, I've got this goal, but I may not be able to do what I thought. I may have to change things. And so it was a humbling moment. Humility is an important part of my mission. But it was also a big change to say, hey, we all can't always do what we set out to do. 
but it doesn't mean we give up. We find another way to the top. Oh, how about that? So. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, my, my dad is, he wants a question. This is important. Donya Bahad. Uh oh! Did you tell me I'm crazy? No, no. Nepalese. Thank you. <gasps> oh, you didn't know yeah, that? Yeah, no. no Say it again. Donya Bad. Oh, all I know is speaking Nepalese. Nepalese. <laughs> all I know is Bosnos, which means sit down. <laughs> yeah. How about Namaste? Namaste. Namaste. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hello. That's, that, that's fantastic. My dad just took over the show for a few seconds. That's fine. <laughs> He's my said, dad. Thank now, you for climbing that mountain. Look, my, my dad's impressed and loves your story. Before we go, you did want to mention one thing about the uh, oh, yes. Genetech. Genetech is that? GatherMS.com. Yep. It's an amazing website of resources and services available in, in Boston. It's in six cities around the United States. Mm -hmm. It's going to be going nationwide. Anybody with MS can go onto this website and find out everything they need. There are um, most of them are free. They can get to the uh, ADA. They can get to Lyft if they want a, a ride to their support group. They can find support groups, the MS bike rides. The entire MS community is right there at their fingertips. It will help that patient navigate. It'll help their care partners. They came up with it by doing a survey of 800 people with multiple sclerosis called the MS Mindset Survey. Mm -hmm. 85% said they just wanted help with day-to-day -day living. Mm -hmm. And that's what this Gather MS is. Six categories, uh, health and wellness, community, things going on right here in Boston that somebody with MS can find out on their computer and make it part of their life. That's fantastic. And, and how do they get to Gather MS? Uh, GatherMS.com. Oh. And it was inspired by the MS patient and made possible by Genentech. And so I'd love to speak about it because it really is a wonderful service for those people living with MS. Well, listen, so. you are truly a hero I'm and very you're lucky. blazing trails for people with MS. <laughs> thank uh, the you. book is New Altitude. <laughs> She's the founder of the Climb On Foundation. And we're so glad that she came here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Wendy Booker. Thank you. Uh, Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs>